feels like a bit of a relief to unbox an Apple monitor. Remember, it wasn't that long ago they said they were getting out of the display business, but here we are with the studio display. To quickly go over the specs, it's a 27 inch monitor that displays 5K image. It's got 600 nits of brightness, can display a P3 wide color gamut, True Tone is built into it. It's got three USB-Cs on the back and one Thunderbolt, which can charge MacBook Pro. And it's got a built-in A13 processor. At this point, I've had the studio display for a few days. So let's call this an early review. First of all, let's look at the build and the overall quality of it. It's exactly what we wanted. A lot of people were saying like they'd buy a whole iMac if they could just use it as a monitor. That's a little desperate and a little excessive, but I, I can see why, because there's always been a beautiful display in those 5K iMacs and we just want to be able to use it with our other computers. This is basically that exact same panel. I've, I've heard it is the same panel as in the 5K IMAX. I can't confirm that myself, but it's always had a great image and now it's in a much better housing. So the whole thing is made of aluminum and glass and feels solid as you would expect. It is really, really nicely built. My review unit has the fixed height stand, meaning that you can only swivel it 30 degrees back and forth, but you can't lift it up and down. This is my biggest problem with the Apple display is because when you spend this much money on a monitor, you might want to be able to adjust it. If you're a similar height to me, it's going to be frustrating. Or you could spend $400 more to get an adjustable version. And that's a lot to spend just to adjust the heights. So I wish they had re-engineered a different mechanism other than what's on the XDR. Because the Pro Display XDR has this exact same height thing, but it's part of a much more expensive monitor, so it feels less out of place. On the studio display, I, I just really wish that the default and only option had some kind of height mechanism that wasn't as expensive. They do offer one solution where for free you can switch it to a vase amount, but you can't interchange back and forth. So you either get one or the other when you order the monitor. And if you noticed, yes, that is a Mac Studio over my shoulder. And as soon as I finish this video, I'll record one about that. So I recommend subscribing if you wanna learn more about professional creative tools, which is usually what I'm talking about here. And while we're talking about quality, the ports on the back are actually a big part of why I would choose this or why I have been using the LG 5K Ultrafine up until now, because it seamlessly integrates with any Mac. I know that doesn't seem like a big deal, but when you're using monitors that were optimized for, let's say, Windows, there's a lot of other things to struggle with. So you can't take it for granted that you just plug one cable between the computer and monitor and every time you open it, it wakes up properly or that you're working in clamshell mode and it behaves as expected. This stuff is incredibly valuable and not the reason that I think it's sort of worth paying that extra Apple tax sometimes to just get that predictable performance without having to mess around. To demonstrate one aspect of the build quality, I put the Apple Studio display next to the LG 5K Ultrafine and just bump them, just give them a little tap. And can you see how much the LG vibrates? It just, it just keeps shaking every time you touch it. Even just operating your mouse and keyboard sometimes can be enough for it to start vibrating. On the other hand, the studio display is rock solid. Honestly, most of the movement is coming from my table, which is on wheels. So it is not gonna move. It is a solid piece of aluminum. And in production environments, it feels great to have that confidence in your gear. Let's take a close look at this panel. It's nothing new. It's been around for a few years. It is not giving us a true HDR image. It's not high refresh rate. It's only 60 Hertz. It's only 600 nits, but that's actually what most of us need most of the time. When the recent M1 MacBook Pros were announced, I was amazed to see that they were able to integrate that high refresh rate and HDR into such a small screen using that micro LED technology. That's not what we have here. We have something very similar to the iMac display or also similar to the LG that I was using. And for the record, I have absolutely loved using that LG 5K, but I know a lot of people have had big reliability issues with it. So I, don't know, I think I've just gotten lucky so far. So I put the new studio display right next to one of the new MacBook Pros. And it's hard to represent what's happening in this footage because I'm only mastering this in SDR. This is not an HDR video that you're watching right now, but on the screen, I was seeing them in HDR in real time. The MacBook Pro has a peak brightness of 1600 nits where it's only 600 nits on the studio display. And honestly, it doesn't jump out at me as much as you'd think. Those numbers have a huge difference, but I'm still pretty used to SDR viewing. That's how I like to master my videos. And to me right now, HDR is mostly about improving viewing experiences. So if you're in an overly bright room, you can still see what's going on. I don't really like it to have like extra bright twinkly lights that are just distracting. That doesn't look great to me. And it's not how most professional movies mastered in HDR look. 
if you're having a hard time seeing the difference in these clips, which are from Jonathan Morrison back when we were shooting his XDR review, he did an amazing HDR video so that we could do a test. So this is being displayed in HDR, but I have a way for you to visualize it more precisely. If you're not familiar with these mountain looking graphics over here on the left, those are waveforms and it's just representing what's happening on the right. And this one, the left waveform is our studio display. The right waveform is the XDR display. And what you can see is that the peak is a little bit higher on the XDR that's built into the MacBook Pro. So this distance, that's about the relative difference between an HDR and an SDR 1600 nit versus 600 nit display. The numbers make it sound different than it actually is when you see it. So for most creative professionals like myself, 600 nits is enough this year in 2022 anyway. Of course, you can future-proof yourself with HDR or if you're already doing HDR mastering, you know what you need. And the studio display is also available with the nano texture glass, which is actually, it's different glass. It's not just a coating on top. And I did some tests to show how it changes the way that light bounces back off of it. You can see it really diffuses and scatters that light so you don't get harsh reflections. This is great if you're sitting in an office that has a window behind it, which mine actually does. And I'm glad actually the upgrade price came down. It used to be $500 on the iMac 5K and now it is $300 on the studio display. When you're buying a display, usually you're not thinking that hard about the speakers, but Apple's gone out of their way to make sure that the studio display has some great ones. In fact, there are six speakers in here. Four of them are force canceling woofers, so they reduce vibration, and two of them are tweeters. This is similar technology to what they did in the MacBook Pros and those sound Amazing, I never thought a laptop could sound that good. So let's hear what the studio display sounds like next to a few others. Now, can you judge anything about speakers from a YouTube video like this? No, not at all. <laughs> but maybe you can tell it sounds way better than the LG, and I'm telling you, it's better than any other built-in speaker I've heard before. It, it sounds like the best TV you've ever heard. So it's not gonna replace a speaker system, but it's the best I've experienced coming from an all-in-one solution. There's also some big upgrades to the camera and microphone. Here's the new 12 megapixel camera on the new studio display, and it also has that three microphone array inside. And why do you need three microphones? Basically, there's some amount of noise cancellation. So when you're on, let's say, a Zoom call, a FaceTime, whatever, and there's sound coming out of your speakers, one of the microphones is aware of what is being projected. Others are canceling that out and others are recording you and all of it combines into one beautiful voice. Now this is the LG Ultrafine microphone and camera. How does it look? Now you're seeing a sample of the old, old iMac FaceTime cameras this is from 2013. And how does it look? How does it sound? These are the microphones. What do you think? Now, I'm recording this right now in QuickTime and it's actually cropping in on me. I, I don't know how to get the full width of this, but inside there's actually a much wider camera and a lot of intelligence going on. So that ultra wide lens and the A13 processor inside are doing some interesting things. So now we have center stage, which a few other Macs and iPads have already had where it has some face awareness and it can track me around the scene. This is usually really good. Sometimes I find it, it drifts unintentionally and that can actually be a little bit distracting. I'd rather it be a little more focused and stay on me. But what's really cool is when other people enter the frame. So if you have friends and family nearby, the width of the lens suddenly becomes useful. Like you can see more of what's going on and it becomes an extremely wide lens. Like I actually think that's really cool. So if you have people kind of gathering around you, it has some sense of like, let's make sure they're all seen because not everybody is you know, good at making eye contact with the camera. So overall, I love this feature. I do feel like it could use a little more refinement through software. I wish I had a button though to just zoom out in and out at any time, that'd be cool. Now let's sum it all up, which is actually kind of hard with this display because I really love it, but it's quite expensive. So I think there's gonna be a lot of mixed emotions about that online. We've already seen a lot of arguments, but here's the thing. I don't know what other display I would rather have in this price range. If you're looking to spend anywhere over $1,000, to me, it absolutely has to be the studio display. That LG 5K served me very well. Monitors last for a long time and it was like $1,300 and had a lot more problems for most people. Like it's not that reliable. 
You've probably heard photographers give the advice that it's worth investing money in your lenses because they're gonna outlast your camera body. Kind of got the same situation going on with displays and computers here. The insides of a computer are gradually gonna slow down as your demands go up, but the display, it's gonna last a while and you just don't need to upgrade them nearly as often. I think Apple's done something really great with the studio display that is probably gonna last a very long time, even if we do see some upgrades soon. The modularity is part of the reason that Apple decided to cancel the 27 inch iMac, which I really hope comes back soon because I think a lot of creatives, including myself, love to use it. But regardless, this is what we've been waiting for from Apple, so I'm really glad it's finally here. And by the way, this is the first video I've ever shot in 8K, so hopefully it looks sharp. I'm about to go edit it on the Mac Studio, so if you wanna know how that goes, check out the next video.